We all know what it's like to be involved in discourses and narratives that are either successful or unsuccessful, interesting or boring, true or untrue. But have you ever wondered how these judgments can be made? Well, that's where Grice helps us out. He identifies four maxims which enable us to judge to what extent a discourse is successful or not. So these maxims are rules or observations drawn from successful discourse, and they are the maxim of quality, quantity, relation, and manner. So for discourse to be successful, we clearly need information that is accurate, that is true, and has substantial evidence. Likewise, we need enough information to draw judgments from. However, if there is too much information, that can tend to fog the meaning. The information also needs to be relevant to what we're currently talking about. And finally, the information needs to be presented in a clear, unambiguous, unobscure, orderly manner. It needs to be relatively concise and to the point. If you follow all these rules, then of course your discourse is going to be clear and understood. So what happens when these maxims are not followed or flouted? Well, let's see. But we have our ways. Oh, yeah. oh, you've got it. One trick is to tell them stories that don't go anywhere. Like the time I caught the ferry over to Shelbyville, I needed a new heel for my shoe. So I decided to go to Morganville, which is what they call Shelbyville in those days. So I tied an onion to my belt. Which was the style at the time. Now, to take the ferry cost a nickel. And in those days, nickels had pictures of bumblebees on them. Give me five bees for a quarter, you'd say. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt. Which was the style at the time. Poor, poor Mr. Burns. So what is it that makes this discourse a failure? Well, first of all, it clearly flouts the maxim of quality. I very much doubt that it has ever been considered fashionable to wear an onion on your belt. Therefore, some of this information is clearly untrue. It clearly ignores the maxim of quantity, as there is far too much information provided. Relation is ignored also, since some of the information is totally irrelevant to the actual conversation which is, after all, a job interview. As for manner, the information is unconcise and completely disorganised. So we can see that Grandpa Simpson flouts all four of these maxims, and the discourse completely falls apart. So now when you're faced with a text, whether it be a poem, novel, or piece of spoken discourse, analyse it using Grice's maxims, and see just how true and effective these texts really are.